Ah. All right, so all lighting tricks aside, this is a scary time because it's nearly October 31st. And no, not Halloween. It's the time that your tax return is due. It's tax time. At least it is in Australia anyway. And so I've been going crazy getting my taxes done and it made me think, I haven't done a video on the Crafty Music Tips channel about this. There's probably gonna be people out there that would need to know some of this information. So if that's you, you come to the right place, let's talk tax. Boring. Wait, this might be the answer we're looking for. Okay, so if this is your first time to the Crafty Music Tips channel, hello, my name is Crafty, I'm a full-time musician, I live in Australia, and so this video is going to be going through the tax basics, and I guess it's applied to people that live in Australia, but there are some general things, some basic things about tax that, if you're wondering, we'll stick around, hopefully you'll learn something. Chapter one. All right, so first on the agenda is talking about what actually is tax. That'd be good to know, wouldn't it? So basically, it's a compulsory financial charge or a levy imposed on a taxpayer by a government organisation in order to fund government spending and public expenditures. But if all that didn't make sense, well, then put simply, it's basically that if you earn money, the government says, all right, good on you, but I'll just take a bit of that. Yoink. Yoink. And before you say, oh, that's not fair, well, look, they do give you stuff in return like hospitals, education, basic infrastructure that you probably need like roads, bridges, airports, uh, scientific and medical research, maintaining natural resources, you know, like, so they're, they're giving back for the stuff that they're taking. Well, oh, so much to give. And actually, now that I think about it, it sort of reminds me a little bit of a story that a mate of mine, he's older than me, told me that he got his very first ever paycheck and he was so excited and he went home and he showed his mum, he's like, look, I got paid from my job. It would have been like 16 at the time. And his mum took money off of him in that moment. Not congratulations and well done and have fun with that. It was straight away she was taking a percentage for his rent. And I don't know what you think about that, but for me at the time, I remember thinking, what a bitch. What, what, what? <laughs> but, you know, now that I've kind of got a little bit older myself and I kind of realised like, ah, oh, right, well, you know, if he was 16 and he got his first paycheck, that's 16 years of her paying for him for so many things. So I guess it was fair, right? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. But I digress. We'll get back to talking about tax, right? So we're going to talk about two main types of tax, income tax and GST. Bloody Howard. You voted for him. Okay, so first up, and actually for most of this video, we're going to be talking about income tax. What would income tax be? Well, basically it's a tax on income. Whoa. Well, duh. So the next thing we're going to talk about is, do you need to pay income tax? Hmm, that is a very good question. I guess the answer would be in it depends on the type of earning that you're earning. So to generalize, I've categorized earnings into three types, hobby, employee, or business. Now, a hobby earning is basically where you're not intending to make a profit. So three, profit. If you do make some sort of money, well, then it's basically just to pay for the expenses. Now, if you're an employee, well, basically that just means that you're working for someone, working for a business, an employer, and you're classed as an employee, which is a bit different than if you're in the third type, which is a business, if you're running it by yourself and you're subcontracting yourself, which means that you're the boss. Or maybe your business is either a partnership or a company. Now, getting back to the original question of do you need to pay income tax? Well, if you're running a business that's a hobby business, well, you can actually earn any amount of money and you don't need to pay tax, but you have to make sure that you're definitely classed as what would be called a hobby not a business, because if you are running a business, 
means that you're making a profit. And if you are running as a business, then you need to have what's called an ABN, which stands for an Australian business number. But more on that later. Now, if you're an employee, you can actually claim what's called a tax-free threshold, which means that if you earn anything up to $18,200 in Australia, then you can actually not pay any income tax on that amount. But if you did earn higher than that amount, well, then you would have to lodge a tax return. More on what that means later on. If you're classed as a business, then you would need to pay income tax on anything that you earn. Wait a minute, did you say anything? Anything. Anything. Yes, anything. All right, all right, all right. So what about if you're actually getting paid? You're in the throes of receiving money. What happens to tax stuff then? What are the details? Well, I'm glad you asked. If it's a hobby, well, then you're probably receiving cash or a funds transfer of some kind, and you're probably not really going to have to worry about a tax invoice. More on that later. Basically, if anybody needs some sort of receipt of some kind, well, then you can give them what's called a statement by supplier. It's a one-page form. It's pretty easy to fill out. And basically what it does is it just legitimizes you not needing to provide a tax invoice. Now, if you're an employee, well, usually you would fill out a timesheet. And then what the employer would do is then withhold tax and superannuation on your behalf. Thank you very much. All right, and the other type is if you're a business, if you want to get paid, you have to supply the person who's going to pay you with a tax invoice. If you're not really sure what that is, it's basically just like a receipt, but it's usually a one-page document and it will usually say the words tax invoice somewhere pretty big. It will have your details. It will have the details of whoever needs to pay you. And it also needs an ABN. Remember when I said that before? Remember what it stands for? That's right, Australian business number. And what that is, it's just a unique 11 digit number, which then is really easy to identify who you are and what your tax details are. I want details and I want them right now. Now, if you're thinking, ah, yeah, probs don't need an ABN, I can get away without having that. Well, if you don't have one, well, then legally, if you give somebody an invoice that doesn't have an ABN on it, then they can legally withhold up to 48.5% of your money until you do supply them with an ABN. Denied. So maybe get an ABN, hey? It's pretty easy to do. You can do it online for free, and it's pretty quick and easy just to fill out your details, and then you get a number. I am not a number. I am a man. Now, if you need one, I'll leave a link below. And also, while I'm at it, I'll leave a link to find out about how you can get yourself a tax file number, which is probably something else that you'll need to get as well. Oh, so many numbers, I know. But trust me, that's pretty much all you need. You'll be right. Alrighty then. Now, it's not compulsory to have to have a tax file number, but it does help potentially when you're starting a job. And it definitely helps with lodging a tax return, which, whoa. What a segue to our next segment, which is about lodging a tax return. Goodbye, I have to do my tax. <laughs> All right, so what is a tax return? Basically, it's your one time every year that you need to officially say, hey, government, this is what I own. And something that took me a long time to realize myself was that it's your responsibility. It's every individual's responsibility to do that themselves. Now, they won't do it for you and they won't chase you to do it unless, of course, it's to chase you up for a fine for being late in doing it. So October 31st is when it needs to be done if you're doing what's called self-lodging. That's where you can do it for free. You can do it online, you just fill in all the details and then you're done. But maybe you don't want to have to do it by yourself or maybe you'd like an expert with someone that knows more of the ins and outs on how to do it. And that's what I do. I have an accountant and the accountant way is just fantastic. It, you know, it does cost, but it's so worth it. 
Now, just while we're on the subject of tax returns, it's important that you know the difference between what's called earnings. That's where you earn money. You probably already know that. But then there's also these things called expenses, which is you spending some of that money that you got. You probably already knew that too. But sometimes people don't know the difference between what's called gross and net. Gross earnings basically means it's not like, ah, gross earnings. Um, Yeah, well, anyway, um, gross earnings basically are just all of your earnings tallied up. And your net earnings are your gross minus the expenses. Now, there's several ways of earning funds in the music industry. Here's just a quick short few. Okay, so once you've tallied up all of your taxable income, well, then what do you do? Do you just minus all of the expenses and then is that your net earnings? Well, it's different with tax. You've got actually something called deductions. Now, deductions are different to expenses. It's weird, right? But hear me out. So an expense is just something that you've spent money on. But a taxable deduction is a bit more of a specific type of expense. Just because something is an expense doesn't mean that the tax department is going to be like, yeah, 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 no worries, you can write that off as earnings that you don't need to claim. Oh, yeah. (laughs) A general way to be able to tell the difference between an expense and a deduction is there has to be a direct link between what the expense is and what you're getting paid for. So for instance, if you're just going to see a live band in concert, that might not be a direct link, but if you're going on a tour and you have to pay for the tour bus higher, I'd say it's a direct link. But because I'm nice and I want you to really understand, here's a big list of a bunch of things that could be classed as tax deductions. Okay, so we're nearly there. Now, remember earlier in the video, I said there's two main types of tax. Do you remember what they were? The first was income tax. The second was GST. GST. Exactly. GST stands for goods and services tax. And it's not income tax. They're two completely different taxes. They are really quite similar in a way. So some people don't understand that there is a difference. We're not so different after all. But there is a difference. One is a tax on your income, and the other is basically government money that's added on to your income that you then collect for the government and then give it back to them. Kind of sounds weird, right? But the reason why it came in is because, look, remember that it's your job in order to tell the government, yeah, this is what I earned. You know, so let's say that you earned $20,000, right? Then your taxable income is $20,000. That means that you'll get less than $20,000. But let's just say that there was a wacky idea that you would just tell the government that you've earned only $15,000. That means that extra $5,000 that the government hasn't been told about you earning, well, then you won't be taxed on that. You'll keep all of those $5,000 to yourself. Now, that's illegal. <laughs> oh, no, this is a risky business. And the reason why a GST came in to Australia, it's in other countries as well, is because it was a way of making sure that if everybody's charging for GST, money that's not your actual money, 10%, if that money is always added on to your earnings, well, then the government's always going to have more of a legit, solid idea of what it is that you've actually been earning. Now, is this making sense for me? It took a little while to understand exactly how it sort of worked. But basically, you don't need to register your business to be charging for GST unless you're earning over $75,000 in one particular financial year. GST is optional. optional. Now, while I'm at it, just a quick tip. 
If you're your own business and you know that you're going to be paying some sort of a tax at the end of every financial year, well then have an account dedicated specifically, especially for your tax money that you're going to need to be supplying to the government. I learned the hard way that all of a sudden you get your tax bill and you're like, ah, I don't have this money. What am I going to do? So if it's there in an account just sitting there waiting to be used, well, life is so much easier. So easy. All right, this is fun. Let's talk more about tax for the next three hours. No, God, please, no, no. Let's not do that. I'm done. (laughs) No more tax for me for this year. Oh, I can wait a while until it happens again. So let me know in the comments below, was this a helpful video for you? Let me know what is it that you learned. You can ask some questions as well if there's something that I need to clarify a bit for you. Also, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to this Crafty Music Tips YouTube channel because there's a bunch of really helpful content just like this that is going to be coming right at you, including this one and this one. Go check them out. Rock on.